if the cast members are doing that, imagine what the restaurant workers and third party vendors are going through. Because the restaurant workers and third party vendors in Disney Springs are also having it back. So I don't want people to think that, oh, well, if you're a Disney cast member, then why not just move over to Disney as a regular cast member so then you can work for them and you'll be good. No, 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 no. Disney ain't doing good for their cast members either. And this tells me that the union could be doing a whole lot better than what they are already doing. But of course, some union bosses, some union presidents are in cahoots with the people at the top. This is why it's important to push for more worker-owned companies, worker-owned uh, workplaces, because ultimately, uh-uh. We have to go beyond unions. I'd say unions are good. They're a step in the right direction, but we have to go beyond them. So Disney Springs, if those of you who do not live in Orlando know, Disney Springs is the kind of outer type of uh, area where you can go in and walk around without having to without having to pay to go into Disney, right? There's restaurants, there's shops, there's stores, there's entertainment, you know, for instance, you have places like the House of Blues, right? Uh, you have, you know, different uh, restaurants like the Rainforest Cafe. Uh, Planet Hollywood used to actually have a big restaurant out there. <clears throat> I actually applied to work there back in the day. It's a, a restaurant that had, I think it's over 800 seats, right? That was a huge restaurant. It was considered one of the busiest restaurants in the world. Um, I think it was back in 97, it was considered one of the busiest restaurants in the world. And that was the Planet Hollywood. And uh, in at the at that time, it was called Pl Disney Disney's Pleasure Island. Uh, and then they called it Downtown Disney. But now it's called Disney Springs. So they rebranded a couple of times. But, uh, you know, while Disney has, you know, union members, you know, as cast members, the employees of the third party companies aren't so lucky. So let's get into this. I wanted to get into the story because I think this is important that, you know, those of us here in Orlando, we may think if you work in Disney Springs, that you're a Disney employee, in reality, it's not actually the case. So let's get into this article. Because Disney Springs restaurant workers highlight their second class status with lower pay and fewer benefits than unionized Disney employees. Says so they vow to continue to fight for a fair process to organize. So here are the Disney uh, employees from local 737 Unite here. So let's continue on. Julie Lindsay, a 21 year old server who works at the upscale Italian restaurant Maria and Enzo's at Disney Springs, says she hears from guests all the time how lucky she must feel to work for Walt Disney World. And she gets it. Guess that Disney expect to get the Disney magic, the Disney experience from us. Still, when she hears those kinds of comments, she admits, I'm quickly reminded that I am a second class worker. She's not alone. A new survey released by Hospitality Labor Union Unite Here Local 737 highlights what subcontracted workers like Lindsay describe as second class status on Disney World property a class of non-union workers at subcontracted bars and eateries who earn less pay and have fewer benefits and rights on the job.
compared to their unionized counterparts employed by Disney World. Lindsay, like nearly 1,000 other workers at 56 restaurants and bars in Disney Spring Marketplace, is not officially employed by Disney despite working on the entertainment giant's property. Her restaurant and several other others across Disney Springs Marketplace are owned and operated by a division of Delaware North, a multinational hospitality company that reported $4.3 billion in revenue last year, surpassing their pre-pandemic levels. So it's it's not like they don't have the money, you know, when it comes to, uh, you know, worker pay as well as benefits. And, you know, I think it's safe to say that most of these workers, they live here in Orlando. Uh, Orlando is quickly becoming one of the most expensive cities in the state of Florida. According to the National Low Income Housing Coalition, you have to make at least $35 an hour uh, in order to afford a two bedroom apartment in this state. And one of the highest, fastest growing cities is Orlando, Florida. We're getting up there with Miami and West Palm Beach. That's how fast and how expensive this city is getting. And of course, as the city goes up, the county also as well. So we are in Orange County. Disney sits right around the, 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 the cusp but between Orange County and Osceola County. And so, of course, you know, you have uh, that access to Osceola, where you have Kissimmee, St. Cloud, uh, Point Siena. So you have that as well as you have all of Orange County. And then on top of it is, is Walt Disney World. So it's the, it was, it's the entertainment capital of the world. We have millions and millions of people that come through Orlando International every single year. Uh, we have uh, Disney pretty much owns Orlando. If you look, if you get off the plane at OIA, by the time you hit that that monorail, that tram that takes you from the the gates to the main terminal, right? You'll see painted on there. Remember the magic. You'll see. Mickey, Minnie, Donald, Goofy, Daisy, you see them in your face. I'm telling you right now, Disney is king of Orlando. The mouse rules all. So when it comes to, uh, you know, people who work for the mouse, to be honest with you, a lot of them, they actually don't make that much because it's a big corporation, right? Multinational. And look, Walt Disney owns ABC News. They own ESPN, right? So these companies that are literally on Disney property, they make good money, good money. And the fact that these workers aren't really making enough, it says a lot. Let's continue. Says other than other Disney Spring spots like the Rainforest Cafe and Raglan Road Irish Pub are operated by different subcontractors who have agreements with the Walt Disney Company to operate on the mouse's property. Says chefs and servers who work at several of these subcontract restaurants came together at local 737 Union Hall on Wednesday to highlight the second class status as they renew a call for their employees to allow them a fair process to organize a union. Although over the 40,000 Disney World employees have been unionized for decades, workers at these subcontracted bars and restaurants at Disney Springs are not. Says Sabrina Reddit, a full-time cook at Disney Springs, Maremoto, Asia, owned by Delaware North. This means her pay rate of $18 per hour is $5.10 less than what somebody employed by Disney earns in her same role. That equal to a difference of roughly $10,000 a year, a difference that is increasingly weighing on her. Remember what I just said. In order to afford a two-bedroom apartment in Orlando, Florida, you need to make over $35 an hour. 
So if you're only making 18 bucks an hour, guess what? That's half of what you need to make. And don't, and look, you still need to make way more above that in order for the one bedroom. So people making 18, 19, even $20 an hour, they're having to shack up with other people and live in the rest. Some people, they may have to live in hotels and motels in order to be able to survive. Now, I want to get back to this, but look, even, even regular cast members. So, okay, Disney employees are called cast members. Cast is a acronym. I forget exactly. Uh, costume, something, something, something. Anyway, but a lot of Disney employees, cast members, are not actually making that much money either. And so there, there was a story that I think I brought out a, a while back. Hang on. I think I had it up, but I think I took it down. There was this uh, story about how Disney cast members um, are not making enough, right? Yeah, here it is. All right, so let me share this with you guys too, because I think this is important. Because if workers for third party vendors aren't making enough, all right, it's not just them, it's also actual cast members too. So let me share this with you guys just for a second. In essence, is the happiest place on earth if you do not work. You have cast members crying in the break room because they can't afford food and they're eating ramen noodles and they don't know what to do. That's painful. And that's what we're seeing now. We're seeing cast members struggle so hard and it shouldn't be that way. We bring the magic to the guest. Why won't Disney bring the magic to the cast? When I go to change my costume, I see my fellow cast members coming out of their car to go take a shower because that's their home. I see my cast members not eating during their break because they don't have food. I personally have bought food. I've tried to help as much as I can, but I'm struggling as it is. There's only so much I can do. Wait one minute. Disney doesn't feed their employees for free? Disney does not feed their employees for free? You do not get free food for your lunch break? Out of the billions of dollars they make per month, you mean to tell me out of the millions of dollars they make per day just in food service alone and they do not feed the very people that make their company run? They rather their employees starve? I'm not talking about third party companies. I'm talking about the, the mouse himself. If I have to come to work after thinking about my rent, thinking about my daughter's education and finances, you know, expenses, and I have to come to work and smile, that's not magical, that's painful. Living in the Orlando area has definitely posed its challenges. I think that since I, me and my husband first moved here in 2016, that everything from, again, the price of rent to food, everything has really gone up, but it hasn't reflected in our paychecks. Uh, our rent alone has gone up over 30%, and we 
live in the same apartment that has the same amenities. I'm gonna end up homeless like a lot of other cast members. I'm gonna end up living in my car or living in a homeless shelter because I still have underage children. I've noticed that food pantries are coming back in the locations because some of our cast can't afford to bring food. You hear people eating at the vending machine more. People are leaving their apartments and moving in with other people. This is sad because we work for a multi-billion dollar company and we should really be able to sustain ourselves. But you can't do nothing with $15 an hour in Central Florida. I'm looking at less than $500 in my savings, which means one big thing can take my whole family financially out of the game and put us back in a cycle that we have fought so hard to get out of. I have to. So that I'm sharing this with you guys to show that if the cast members are doing that, imagine what the restaurant workers and third party vendors are going through. Because the restaurant workers and third party vendors and Disney Springs are also having it back. So I don't want people to think that, oh, well, if you're a Disney cast member, then why not just move over to Disney as a regular cast member so then you can work for them and you'll be good. No, 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 no. Disney ain't doing good for their cast members either. And this tells me that the union could be doing a whole lot better than what they are already doing. But of course, some union bosses, some union presidents are in cahoots with the people at the top. This is why it's important to push for more worker-owned companies, worker-owned uh, workplaces, because ultimately, uh-uh. We have to go beyond unions. I'd say unions are good. They're a step in the right direction, but we have to go beyond them. So let's go back into the article. That I wanted to share that with you guys as well. So uh, Miss Reddit says, I'm a single mom. And at this point, I can't support my family on the wage I am making. So like many other renters in Orlando, a young mom, young mom said she's facing a rent increase from her landlord that she can't afford to pay. And her landlord has begun the process of evicting her and her family. If I worked for Disney, I'd be able to keep a roof over my family. Julissa Ruiz, a young server at Pizza Point, another Delaware North restaurant, said she similarly struggles to get by earning just $16 an hour and bringing home less than $500 weekly, working part-time. Without access to a full-time job opportunity, she can't afford her own place, doesn't have a car, and is currently staying in the living room of a friend's house. I'm basically homeless. When people say, oh, you just need to get a job, Then they move the goalposts. They'll go, well, you just need to go back to school. All right, well, I'm forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in student loan debt. Can you guys help me out there? Well, you shouldn't have went to college. You should have tried to get yourself a scholarship. I did, and I was denied. Well, whose problem is that? See? See where it goes? And then, next thing you know, well, they default on their student loans. And then they end up back out in the street and it's like, well, you should have been smarter about how you spent your money. But you told me to go to college. You told me to get an education. I got into all that debt. Then I went into a job where I couldn't even pay it off because the thing is that they're not even paying that much. You got people with master's degrees that not even making, being able to make an actual living wage. And then they're having to work for, you know, look, they're working for these restaurants. And the thing is, it's like, look, I'll put it this way. There is dignity in work, period, right? 
And people should not be, you know, placed one above another because of the type of work that they do, whether you work in a restaurant or you work in a law firm, it doesn't matter, you're still doing work. The problem is, is that you have people who will look, who, who will work at places like this, and you'll look down upon them and say, well, you guys just need to do better. You guys, you know, you we can't pay this well. When in reality, you could. I'll be honest with you, you can't pay a living wage, you shouldn't exist. I said what I said. The problem is you got a lot of people who will make excuses for these big corporations. It does not make any sense for people who are at the top to make three, four, five hundred percent more than their lowest paid employee. That is absolutely crazy. Let's continue. Oh, and by the way, if you're staying in a hotel or motel under duress, or if you're staying with a friend, or hell, if you have roommates, but you're under duress, like you really don't want roommates, but you have to, essentially you're homeless. Because you're under duress having to be in a living situation that you really don't want to be in. How many people are actually homeless in this country? It's way bigger than they're willing to admit by they, corporations, Democrat and Republican parties. They don't want to admit that, but it's true. Now we'll continue. But it's not just the difference in pay that is uniting local workers. According to a new survey from the union of 69 workers employed at 18 different, 18 of these subcontracted Disney Springs locations, 59% state they are part-time, meaning they don't have access to benefits given to full-timers only. 46% of those surveyed said that they have no health insurance and only 19% report having health insurance through the employer. It says the industry has been flooded with part-time positions that are demanding full-time availability without offering full-time benefits. That's another thing that some of these companies will do is a lot of times they will take you and say, okay, you're going to be part-time, but they'll put you just to the point where you should be full-time, and then they will work you there you know, as a full-timer so that you will do full-time hours, but they're only giving you, know, you part-time benefits and part-time pay. And so then you're having to pay through the nose for your uh, your healthcare because you can't get it through your job. See, this is another reason why I say we need a nationalized healthcare system because people shouldn't have to pay for healthcare through their jobs. It should just be there for everybody from the womb to the tomb. From birth to back to earth. Anywho. So it says, Kristen Mercer, an Orlando native who works as a server at Maria Enzo's, said back in April when Disney Springs workers first announced their organizing efforts that the industry has been flooded with part-time jobs since the, the pandemic. Specifically, she said there are positions that are demanding full availability while failing to offer the benefits of a full-time job. Jeremy Heiken, president of the United Here Local 737, which conducted the survey, said that this stands in stark contrast to Disney World's unionized workforce. Out of the 18,000 plus employees their union specifically represents at Disney World, only 31% work part time and 100% of workers receive paid sick time. 
regardless of part-time or full-time status. 69% of those who are full-time have access to union negotiated health insurance. So of course, people are talking about how they can't go without health insurance. Um, this person uh, actually has to, is forced to buy their health insurance, which is sad in itself because health insurance is extremely expensive. 500 bucks a month. Uh, Cammy said, I believe every worker at Daisy Springs deserves a first class job too. Uh, so here's the fear that's put in by these corporations. According to Mercer, the server at Maria and Enzo's, the process of organizing at her restaurant has been slow in part because she says people are scared. She feels comfortable enough speaking to the media, but others are worried about becoming a target for retaliation. So, you know, ultimately, here's the point. In addition, because Florida is a right to work state, no worker can be compelled to join a union or pay union dues, even if a majority of workers at their job chose to formally unionize. And if a workplace does unionize, non-union members will enjoy the same benefits as their union co-worker. Non as, ooh, sorry, sorry. Non-members will enjoy the same benefits as their union co-workers. Mercer, who's worked in the hospitality industry for over a decade, said that while it can be disheartening to come across a co-worker ardently opposed to unionization, she feels it's often coming from a place of, well, this just doesn't affect me, without realizing that one day it might. And in the meantime, others who are, who are afforded less are struggling to get by. So this is what's going on. And as far as the people who are working at Disney Springs or working in the restaurant industry, I think that you guys are able to unionize and make a further demand. Um, I'm going to try to reach out to them to see if, uh, if they're able to fully unionize and if they do, I'd honestly like to see them wield their power because I'm gonna be honest with you. If you shut down the restaurants in Disney Springs, Disney Springs shut, shuts down. All you gotta do is go like this. And you know how I know that that would really put a monkey wrench in these owners at Disney Springs. <laughs> Ron DeSantis screwed up the people at the top because if these workers say absolutely not, then these corporations cannot exploit undocumented workers because the undocumented workers they are prevented by Ron DeSantis from actually legitimately working in this state because of the bills that he's passed, because of the laws he's passed. So they can't exploit other workers and go, all right, well, we'll just get other scabs and we'll hire them to come in. No, 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 no. These workers, if they can unionize, you know, I, I, I'm hoping that, you know, inadvertently, Ron DeSantis kind of screwed over the big business leaders in this state. But I'm just hoping that, you know, um, they're able to get their union going because it absolutely means the world to be able to afford what, you know, to be able to afford an apartment, you know, to afford a home. 
to not have to worry about, you know, you being at the mercy of, you know, um, kindness from strangers, you know what I mean? Like, while kindness from strangers is, is, is necessary and it's, it's nice, we should have a system that gives people what they absolutely deserve, which is housing, healthcare, education, food, basics. So, of course, you know, my solidarity is with the people who are at Disney Springs. Keep fighting. And uh, look, I hope that they are successful with Local 737. Get that union going. Make your demands get you know paid as equal to cast members or better and um yeah give them hell give them hell thank you so very much for watching my channel and i deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart if you wish to support the channel further so i can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.